All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so uh, growing up in Ecuador, I'm from Ecuador, I had the opportunity to become a musician and play with friends and with my brother who's playing the drums. And, you know, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the discomfort of, like, performance and, and the discomfort uh, and how we learn to cope and, you know, how this is important for life. And, you know, as a musician, you practice such that, you know, you get used to discomfort of being in front of people and then eventually, like, you do better. Uh, and this is all interesting and good, but uh, my brother, though, he had a very different type of discomfort. He, he had OCD, and, and that was very debilitating. And... And he had a lot of stress, and we had a lot of issues, and many, 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 many years of treatments, and lots of drugs, and, and nothing has changed. Uh, so I decided to abandon my career and become a scientist and research what is going on with this stress that we cannot deal, and how do we manage it, and how to measure, and how to do those things. And I learned quite a bit about, you know, how we think about stress and how stress affects people and anxiety. Uh, but uh, in reality, what I wanted to, to, to learn and what I've come up to really understand over time is that we need to learn how to cope rather than how to uh, deal with stress. Like, what is it that we need to do when we're stressed? How do we become resilient? And what is important? And then, and then discomfort comes in, the, in, in play, and, and that's what I'm going to be telling you uh, about it. Because when you look at you know, coping in nature, it's actually very interesting. Sapolsky has these beautiful books on why zebras don't get ulcers. Well, it's because they actually get uncomfortable and they run when the lion comes. So that's how they cope, right? They, they basically exercise and do things like that. And we know that, uh, you know, Yerkes and Dotson have been telling us over time that, you know, you need some level of, like, uh, stress and arousal to perform in life. You cannot just not be stressed. You have to have the right level of stress. If it's too little stress, you don't perform. If it's too much stress, you also don't perform, right? So you need to find the right level. So uh, stress is not evil, uh, and, and it's not necessarily something we need to get rid of. We need to optimize it. Uh, the problem is that in, in, in modern humanity, what we're trying to do is like, you know, a bunch of like, ways of trying to cope. Like some good, you know, the green ones, some bad, the, the red ones. We're constantly like, you know, drinking and like, uh, praying and a bunch of other things. Let's see what works, right? But at the end of the day, we just wish that, you know, the problems go away and that we don't have stress and eventually we get to the panacea of being all happy. And the truth is that that's not the problem. The problem, uh, the problems are not the problem. What, what we really need is to deal with problems, to learn to deal with problems and to live with them and actually become stronger with them. It's not about eliminating the problems that we need to, to focus. Like Virginia Satir has this beautiful quote uh, about, you know, the important things of problems. So we need to move from what we call maladaptive coping mechanisms, things that are not good for you, towards like better coping mechanisms. But you need the problems to develop these skills. Otherwise, how do you develop these skills, right? You just what, in a vacuum, just reading books? No, you have to practice with problems. So that's what I'm trying to propose, that we should start thinking about discomfort and problems by design. We should embed these kind of challenges in our lives, in our systems. I'm a computer scientist. I work in Maryland. I used to work at the University of uh, Stanford also. Uh, and I, I've been trying to eliminate problems, and now I'm actually trying to embed problems in systems. Like, how do we make you know, things a bit more complex such that people actually learn to cope and be more resilient? So I'm going to show you a couple of ideas about how do we deal you know, with these kind of problems. And there's a lot of interesting things that you can do on an everyday basis. For example, stress, always there. 80% of Americans report to be stressed on a daily basis about all sorts of problems. So you already have there the uncomfortable part. Now you need to learn to cope. So you don't need to like, go finding you know, problems. There are sufficient problems in life to actually practice. Just embrace them. The other one is commute. Actually, 87% of the labor force in America sits in a car and goes to work. And that's also a very uncomfortable situation, but nobody does anything. They just report that a commute is just a waste of time. And it is literally a waste of time, not because you're moving from one place to another. It's because you're not doing anything to learn to cope while you're actually in the car. You're cool, potentially. The other opportunity is just being indoors. But this is the opposite. You're actually very comfortable sitting in a chair all day long. 93% of the time people spend indoors. As I say, you want to find a human, find a chair. See, here's where humans are, right? This is the new ecosystem. 
we used to have these beautiful long legs and arms to like hang from trees and run. Now look at us, which is sitting and clicking things with one finger. So it's really, it's really, we have to break that comfort. It is the opposite. So we had some ideas to how to turn this box of life into features. And in my lab, we have been researching, for example, that we can actually practice coping mechanisms. And we have developed AI-based systems that actually learn that you're having a problem and then give you a coping mechanism and start over time learning teaching people how to cope and they automatically learn you know, what coping mechanisms work for different people. And that way you discover you know, that laughter might work for some people, looking at a video might work for some people. TikTok might be actually a great intervention for some people. Who knows, right? But you know, we can actually discover that systemically. In the car, we have been like teaching people to breathe. We have developed furniture that actually guides you through this low frequency transducer that vibrates and it actually uh, gets in sync with your breathing rate and it shows you what's the best breathing rate that you can have when you're driving without affecting performance. And we've shown that it actually works both in the lab and also in the, on the road. We have also taken a step to the uh, comfortable situation of sitting. We actually created this robotic desk that moves by itself. You're just working, and then all of a sudden it goes up. <laughs> now you have to basically respond to infrastructure. It's not a choice anymore, but it's a, it's a situation where many people actually have said, this is very interesting, you're helping me break you know, my monotony and my sedentarism. Some other people hate it. Some other people said, how do you dare to do this kind of research? It's against <laughs> freedom of everything in this country. You shouldn't do it. Like, you know, I should choose everything I want to do. So maybe something in between is what we need, and we're researching on, you know, how to do this. So at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is this comfort is an opportunity. It's an opportunity, and we should embed it, embed it in, in life uh, to develop these basic skills. It's a powerful signal from the body to become more efficient. It's actually based on interoceptive signals, for, for those who understand, it's the internal feelings of the body that we're not so conscious. It's actually, that's how they express themselves through discomfort. They're saying, like, something needs to be done, right? And, and, and feeling bad, you should stop thinking that feeling bad is really that bad. It may actually just be a signal to say, do something else, right? So let's stop whining a little bit about, like, I don't feel that good, I'm going like, to become so comfortable, and let's try to do something about it. Discomfort design, for those who are designing, these are some ideas that I have, like, don't make things easy, right? The game designers are great. They always create a level where it's hard enough, level one, to actually overcome something, and then you go to level two, and level three, and level four. They create friction. They embed friction. They embed discomfort. Otherwise, if it's too easy or it's too hard, people don't do it. It's okay to experience frustration. Embrace frustration. It is part of learning and let people know that that frustration is part of the process. And it's a first step to, towards adaptation. That's how you basically grow. And then repeat and repeat and accept and rationalize over time that this is actually the way that we became who we are. That's why we're dominant species, solving problems, not just sitting there and eating grass, right? Solving problems. We should embrace problems and discomfort as our way of dealing. So going back to my Ecuador and my brother, uh, sadly, when I went back in December, he was overly medicated. He had become comfortable living a life that was just like a sub, sub life. And, and I got very upset about the situation, so I created a very uncomfortable situation. I said, you know what, we're going to break the cycle of like, over medication and sleeping all day and all that. We created a small ice cream shop. That's the, the fridge that we bought it, like for 200 bucks. We took a couple of like shelves that were sitting there and somewhere, and we just flipped them, and we created the place where we actually expand the, the ice cream shop. And now he had to wake up every day at 10 a.m. and work until 6 p.m. He hated it. Hated it. But now we are in the sixth month, and, and our Golados uh, uh, ice cream shop is actually flourishing and starting to sell more than we ever imagined. I was expecting that he was there just, you know, learning to work, and now he's like, I need help because I have like too many people coming for ice cream. So he's, we, we're breaking that cycle of years and years of, with medications just by putting some effort and embracing the discomfort of changing a life. So this is my message. Let's embrace discomfort. Let's do it by design. Let's don't just be passive. Let's think about it. How do we embed it such that we can help people learn to cope and how to develop resilience 
I used to uh, think that, you know, living in Palo Alto, because I was in, at Stanford, you know, I was in the best place in the world and super, like, advanced. And then I went to Ecuador. I'm like, poor people, they don't have uh, Teslas and all these things. And, you know, I'm like the most... Uh, now I think of the, the completely opposite. I'm like, poor me. I'm losing all my skills doing nothing in this place where there's everything that I need, while the other people are trying to thrive and survive just by collaborating and solving a lot of problems that they have. And I feel like we should find a happy medium between those two. That's my message, and thank you so much for, for your time.